this week, I am not going to lie to you. I have a lot to say this morning. And some of it, or the majority of it, has to do with the Word of God, which is typical, right? So like 95%. But there's this, this prelude part that I never quite know what to say. So I kind of fiddle around, I tell you about my week or whatever, and it's what I call the intro. Well, this week, um, I am going to be very, very honest with you, straight up, up front, this is how your pastor feels, is that I have never felt more inadequate or ill-prepared to give a sermon. And that's just the honest truth. And the fact of it is, is because John 15, it's the the sermon to end all sermons. It's the end all, be all to the Christian walk. Do you want to know what it is to be a Christian? John chapter 15. And really, the first eight verses, the first 11 verses, do you want to know what it looks like? John 15. And so, as I was preparing this week, I couldn't tell you, I listened to three or four different sermons given on this passage. And it's intimidating, because there's guys who are much longer tenured than I, have much more wisdom than I, that are giving awesome sermons on this passage and unpacking it and dissecting it. And I was not sure how to do that. But what I did learn over my wrestle and over my struggle and over talking with my wife and with my mom briefly about it. It was came to this realization, the Holy Spirit. It's so cool because the Holy Spirit oftentimes he will work through the body. That's that's how he does his thing, right? Because that's what Jesus told us he was coming for, the helper. He was going to send him to come alongside of us to do the work that Jesus had set aside for His church to do. And in that, we we are able to lift each other up, to lean on each other as the body, to work with one another. And the beauty of it is, within this passage, my inadequacy, my inadequacy, my feelings of inadequacy, is actually right where Jesus wants me to be. And so, it's like I get to unpack this passage for what I know it as right now. As, as I grow in my faith, as you grow in your faith, this passage is going to shift and change and, and mean more to you. The relationship you have with Christ is going to shift and change and mean more to you and become more evident to you. And this passage will become more evident to you and what it looks like to actually be the branches within the vine of Christ. And what's cool is that that, that's, that's the picture. Branches, they grow. And we grow. And as we grow within the vine, our knowledge and our abiding in Christ, our reliance on Christ, grows more. And I know that that feels like that could be the sermon, right? That, that's, but there's more, and I'll get into that. But I was um, walking along this week, and there's a lot of... There's a few. I'm not going to say a lot. There's a few people that have some pretty good gardens in Laramie. There's this lady who, like, two blocks was that east of us. She has all these aspen trees and stuff, and she, Hudson and I walked by the other day, and um, she was like, I have all these bugs hidden in my garden. 
So if, if your boy wants one, he can find one and take it home. And so me and Hudson kind of looked through the garden. We found this praying mantis, and we've kept it. She let us keep it. And so it was really cool. This nice lady let us kind of dig through her garden. And she says she hides bugs every year, and then slowly throughout the year they just kind of disappear, whether kids take them or whatever, they just disappear. And so Hudson and I, we got to take this memento, memento from this lady. And she also said, she was like, you know what the best way to garden is? The best way to garden. She said, you put on a wide-brimmed hat even with a, a hoe and a pick in one hand and a drink in the other going around and telling somewhere, someone where to dig. That's the best way to garden. Telling someone else where to dig. <laughs> I thought that was funny. And then, um, on an even lighter note, why do potatoes make good detectives? Because they have so many eyes? They, they keep their eyes peeled. Oh. <laughs> so, I will leave you with that. Anyways, I'm going to pray because after that, we, we need prayer, man. <laughs> Jesus, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you for how timeless your word is, for how it is so... It transcends. It transcends all time. It transcends all, all circumstances, all matters of life, all points of life that we're in. And it gives us the key, the key to life. What is that? It is to abide in you. And so I pray that this morning, even though we can't fully understand it, even though we can't fully grasp it, but I pray that our hearts would be open to learn from you what little bit that we can grasp so that we can grow in our knowledge and in our, in, in our abiding 